I've got this little book of the facsimile of the manuscript, this incredible um, thing that's come down to us by such a fortunate accident um, and didn't get destroyed or used as wrapping paper or goodness knows what at a time when Bach's name meant not as much as it does now. And here it is. But what's really charming about this is that this was given to me by my godfather, who I knew as Uncle Ray. And uh, he hasn't dated this, but I'm sure this was 1972 or 73. I was a 12 or 13 year old, probably much more interested in playing cricket and football then. Uh, but I did play the violin, and he says, looking forward to hearing you play them all one day. We'd love Uncle Ray. So, Uncle Ray, if you're picking this up, um, you do now have the chance to hear me play them all. at first that I would call it a pilgrimage. I didn't, it was really quite a, a coincidence of things that made me want to play these pieces over and over again in the way that I've now planned to do. But having got to the end of playing them once in a cycle but spread over three years, I just really, really wanted to play them a lot. So. I started thinking about the ways in which I might do that. And it became clear that it practically is difficult to get opportunities to play in concert halls repeatedly and to organise any kind of concentrated period of playing day after day. And also, I don't think this music really suits the concert hall, just because the concert hall can be, to a greater or lesser extent, but it can be very gladiatorial, very make or break, career oriented. You know, all these things are much more in play in a concert hall. Whether they should be or shouldn't be is another question. But I was aware, having played these pieces in a couple of churches, that they work. Sometimes because one's helped with the acoustics and so on, just physical. But they Playing in church or places where people come for whatever it is, spiritual refreshment, uh, I think encourages people to listen and perhaps me to play in a slightly different attitude from your starting point. And that's not to say this music isn't filled with difficulties that you know aren't there to overcome. Um, one wants to do more than an adequate job. But somehow the relationship between those listening and playing, in this case just me, um, becomes slightly more, or very more, much more um, cohesive. So it became obvious that I was going to have to contact a lot of places like this lovely building here uh, and see if they would be kind enough to let me come and play. And if they were going to do that, then it seemed to me obvious that you could, you could make it a, an opportunity for, 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 for the venues to, to use it as a fundraiser and all the rest of it. Churches are always in need of care and maintenance, all the rest of it. And apart from that, there are 10,000 good causes that one could raise money for. So it began to feel a bit more like a procession and was indeed much more like a procession through various churches across England and quickly into Wales and Scotland and so on. So it became a kind of pilgrimage because I was traipsing across the country at different places of spiritual um, resonance to, um, to play this music. So I think there's another element of pilgrimage in it as well, which is to the music and to the man, J.S. Bach, 
who in a way is kind of, uh, he's such a central figure, but, but he's in, in musical history, in anyone who's studied music and been brought up with the classics or has even only made a cursory investigation, he's, he's there, he's so solid. He's like the, the roof beam, the cornerstone. And it, it seems, and, and also he's such an intriguing and endearing person, what little we know about him or there is to read about him. There are certainly plenty of books, but, but they all have to deal with the fact that there isn't that much that's really known about him. Um, but, but what there is, he comes across as such an endearing and interesting and human and humble, just a, just a wonderful, wonderful man. And uh, so I, I won't be the first to kind of do homage to him in that way, but, but I, I certainly wanted to lay my, my portion of, of, of homage there as well.